In today's tutorial, we are going to be talking about one of my absolute favorite moves, side leg sweep. I love this move because it's very available for all different body types and all different levels. It works your core without having to do a plank or a sit up. Um, it doesn't put any pressure on your lower back, your wrists, your neck. There's just a lot of good stuff going on. However, it is a pretty complex exercise. So today we'll be breaking down the form so that you can get the most out of it. The key to this exercise is a stable setup. So today to help me demonstrate, I'm going to be using this wall that's back here behind me. As I lay down to the mat, I want to get my shoulders and my hips pressed up against the wall because for this move, the shoulders and the hips should be stacked. It's really important that you keep the top shoulder and the top hip anchored against the wall. The next thing has to do with this bottom leg. So I always teach people to pull their bottom leg forward. The reason I do this is because this bottom leg is going to act as a tripod, which is going to help prevent my body from rolling forwards and backwards as I do the leg sweep. If you wanted to get more core work, you could take this leg and move it back some, or you could take this hand and lift it off the floor. Does this make sense? Because if I move the leg backwards and if I lift the hand up, I now have less supporting out here, which will make it harder not to roll forward and backwards when I do the leg sweep. So again, to start this one, think about pressing your shoulders, your hips against a wall, bottom knee bent forward to a 90 degree ankle, and head is supported in the hand. So to explain the next part of this setup, I need to start by showing you the box, which I talk about often in Become. When I talk about the box, I'm talking about this area from shoulder down to the hip and back again. So when we are laying down on our side, we are trying to keep the integrity of that box. So if I lay down like this, can you see that these two points of the box are closer together than these two points of the box. To correct this, I need to recruit my bottom oblique the same way that I would if I were in a side plank. So start by taking the shoulder and tuck the shoulder blade underneath you a little bit, nothing too crazy. Then think about pulling this oblique up. At the same time, think about lengthening this side of the waist. Depending on your body shape, you may or may not get an actual mouse hole space underneath here. Listen, everybody, it doesn't matter, okay? For every single person, this technique applies. There is a difference of letting your ribs and body collapse down onto the floor versus the difference of tucking that shoulder under, using the muscle, and working to stay lifted off of the floor. Now this next part is where it gets really, really interesting. At least if you're a nerd like me about this kind of stuff. So I want you to notice this top leg because a lot of times people let the leg drop down too low or they lift it up too high. Now your waistline actually has a lot to do with that. So if I let my ribs collapse down, I'm going to be able to get this leg up really high. If my leg is up here with my ribs collapsed, I'm going to start to cramp right up here in the very top of the thigh toward the hip. Now watch what happens. I pull the shoulder under, I pull the ribs in. Did you see my leg lower? Right away when I lift this up, the leg is forced to go down. If I keep this lifted, I actually cannot get my leg up that high. So what this tells us is that the setup, the stabilization of the upper body helps control the form of the lower body. Shoulders stacked, hips stacked, oblique lifted, top side of the waist long. Bottom knee is bent forward. I've adjusted so I'm not digging into my bottom hip. This foot down here should be right in line with the hip. 
Now comes the tricky part that you've done this setup. You have to keep all of this anchored and still while you only sweep the leg forward. Woo! I bet you're wondering, how in the hell do I do that? Well, <laughs> this is where the core work comes into place. So as your leg begins to sweep forward, I want you to think about pulling your low belly, your abdominals backwards. Like if you had the imaginary wall behind you, it's like you're trying to press the back into the wall as the leg comes forward. Hopefully it makes sense that by doing this, you've created the principle of opposition. Upper body goes back to the wall, lower body comes forward, and that's how the body works, friends. <laughs> now we have to answer the question, how far do you sweep your leg forward? The answer is that it's going to be different for everyone. However, this is how you know. When your leg starts to come forward, the moment that you can no longer stabilize, meaning that your back starts to roll off of the wall, that means you've gone too far. It also means you've gone too far if you start to feel it only in your hip flexors. When you start to feel it in the top of the leg and not like back here over in the side of the leg, it means that you went too far, so cut the range of motion, squeeze the butt, and that's how you know. From the outside, it looks like there's not necessarily a lot going on in this move. But from the inside, as you've just learned, there's a ton of alignment and a ton of muscles that you are firing up. So anytime you find this move in a become routine, I want you to use it as a moment to really get that, you know, it sounds cheesy, but it's the truth. I want you to really work on that mind-body connection. Start to put your brain into noticing if the shoulders are stacked, what the belly is doing, how much you're wobbling, how still and stable you can be. I always use this one as kind of like a time to mentally connect, and so I would love for you to do the same. Now, the transition out of the side leg sweep can feel a little bit tricky at first, but it's much smoother than you think. So right now, my hip is anchored down on the mat. The same leg as that hip is going to extend out, keeping the hip in the same spot. I'm going to turn over to the belly and get my hands underneath me. What you don't do is you don't try to stay in the middle of the mat by extending the leg and then sliding over and then working yourself down to the belly. So instead, once again, think leg extends, turn to the stomach, you will be further over toward the side of your mat. If you are unable to lay down on the belly, let's say you're pregnant or maybe the transition just doesn't feel good for you, I have an option for that as well, of course. So on one, two, you sweep your leg forward. On three, four, you sweep your leg back. On five, six, you still extend the bottom leg, practicing keeping the torso still. This is great core work. On seven, eight, you're simply going to turn over to hands and knees as opposed to moving to the belly. 